All right, in this lab, we're gonna perform SQL injection in order to get a list of all products from a store. Um, there is a parameter value that goes to a direct SQL statement in the back end. It's not parameterized. So that's going to allow us to add additional commands that will be interpreted by the back end uh, database. Uh, if we can see in this lab, an example of what's happening on the back end with the SQL statement. In the where clause, we're looking for a value for a column. The column is category, and there's some string value that's coming from the end user or attacker. And then there's also an addition on the where clause saying and release equals one, meaning we only want to get values for the column if it matches the string that gets passed in and it's a release product. Our goal is to get all products irregardless of whether or not it's released. So let's go ahead and access the lab. And I already have my proxy enabled, by the way. And so this is the store, the shop that we have. Uh, the search items are here in these links. And we can just click all of these. And I'm going to do this to capture some traffic in my proxy tool. There we go. And if we look in the URL, we can see the parameter values that are being used for each of these filters. So category equals lifestyle, category equals gifts, corporate gifts, so on and so forth. To easily check if this value is susceptible to SQL injection, one thing that we can do is just add a single quote at the end of it. This should cause a syntax error um, if the application is not handling this correctly. So if I hit enter, there we go. We get an internal server error. So that means our SQL statement was not valid. The application didn't handle the error gracefully. And that way we know, okay, we might be able to manipulate this um, in that case. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to Burp Suite. I'm gonna go over to my target sitemap and I'm going to make sure that I set the Port Swigger Lab in scope. So I'm going to right click, add to scope. And then I'm going to go to my proxy history. And notice we do have these other hosts. That's because um, these started logging before I said to only um, grab traffic from what's in scope. What I can do is I can click this filter and I can say show only in scope items and click apply. So now we have everything for the lab and we're not getting any hosts um, outside the lab in this history. We can see in these different URLs, we can see those filter values um, that have parameters. What I can do is if I wanna quickly filter on that, I can also click on filter and then show only parameterized requests. Let's click apply. And there we go. So these are now the targets for the SQL injection based off uh, that syntax here. So what I'm going to do is I can take any of these and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say send to repeater. And this is where I can play around with different SQL statements and fire them off to see how the application responds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just what I did in the browser. I'm going to add a single quote to the end of the parameter value for category. I'm going to click send and we get a 500 error. And if we render that out, we can also see we get that same error there in that case. I'm going to take that single quote out, resubmit this request, and the application responds differently because it's a valid request. And if we go to the pretty or the raw, we can see that it's a 200 request. So now we can play around with the SQL statement. And so what we'll do is we want to try to get everything. I could just add a, and before I do this, I like to right click and say URL encode as you type, this will add any pluses with their spaces. Um, and it just makes it just nice and cleans it up, allows it to be passed through easily. So I'll add a single quote. I'll type in a space. It automatically adds the plus. And I'm going to say or space one equals one dash dash. This percent sign 3D, that's just a URL encoded um, that's the URL encoded value of the equal sign. That's all that is. All right. So if the SQL statement 
is correct, I'm saying select something from, and it's the where clause, where category equals gifts or one equals one. So this should evaluate to true to pull everything back from the database. So if I click send, we get a 200 response. And if we click render, we should get everything. And you're not gonna see everything in this little preview, uh, but what you can do is you can right click and say request in browser. I'm gonna say in original session, I'm gonna copy this URL. I'm gonna go back to my browser and I'm gonna paste, oh, I'm gonna add a new tab and paste that in. And there we go. So we see the lab is solved. It's using my current session and we're getting everything back. And we can even see it in the URL here um, in that case. And if I refresh, and there you go, you see it even in my other tab as well. So that is one way that you can solve this lab. Another solution is to intercept the traffic directly. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna come back and click on any of these um, fields here or these um, product filters. I'm gonna go back to burp. I'm gonna go to intercept. I'm gonna say intercept is on. And I'm gonna click on any of these uh, product searches here. Now I'm intercepting the request in real time. And what I can do is the exact same thing I did with the repeater, but this will fire off and I'll see it in the browser um, directly. So what I'll do is again, I'm gonna right click and say URL encode as you type. That's my preference. I'm gonna add a single quote space or space one equals one dash dash. And we're gonna forward these requests until it doesn't let me forward them anymore. So now it should be back in the browser. And if I respond, and let me, actually, let me change that so you can actually see the value has changed. This is correct, but let me just click on like, let's say lifestyle, there we go. And again, your on code as you type is on space or space, we'll say five equals five. There we go. So we can just make sure that we're seeing the right syntax on the screen or message on the screen. Okay, and there we go, or five equals five. So same thing, we're seeing everything um, in the shop. So um, in this case, what we did was we in intercepted the traffic directly from the browser instead of sending it to repeater um, in that case. But those are two different solutions and you could have also done this in the URL as well. I could have done plus, well, first let's go ahead and break it. Uh, let me turn off the intercept. Let's go ahead and make sure we get a server error first. And then I could have done is plus or three equals three, dash, dash. And then we get back the data as well. So yeah, so I could have done it in the URL, could have done it in repeater. I could also have done it in uh, intruder. So those are just a few different ways to solve this lab. Hopefully this was a helpful video. Uh, thank you very much and take care. See you in the next one.